Trump on the Philippines today, where do we really stand in terms of corruption? Not in comparison to the past. I mean, in terms of global um, standards, I mean, there are some we could, we could pick, some of the bribery parts. Or I, I will pass on that, Maria, because I, I don't have a way of uh, comparing country to country. In fact, as, as a matter of my own policy, I don't believe in, this, in these uh, cross-country contests. I believe that we should improve from the past regardless of what's happening vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other countries. I mean, if they can do better, well, that's fine, but we should not go get worse ourselves compared to the past. We should always be upward and upward. That's what I believe. It's from the perception, though, the perception seems to be that it's better to do business here now. Oh, Is yes. that correct? Definitely, from the past, yes, which is to me what matters. In other words, I'm not, I, I don't go for comparing with Malaysia or Singapore or something. I mean, they, you know, we're, not in a, we're not in a contest, I sure. would say. But how bad is it that nearly 50% report a case of bribery on, and only 1 in 10 actually no, report bribery? No, yeah, it's not satisfactory at all. But, uh, well, in that particular case, it didn't even improve at all. So, so we can't be happy with that. But uh, the, the public sector has improved a lot, and that's, that's very, very good to see. Now, the, pub, the private sector has to improve its own standards. The private well, sector. Yeah. And gentlemen, please, can you react to the report? What, how did you react to the way the report, uh, to, the, to, the, to what it showed us? Let's start with Bill, loose, and then <laughs> we'll go to Steve and Ambassador Trout. Well, thank you, Maria. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, not surprised with the results uh, on the public sector side. Uh, we've, I mean, I have a different point of view from Mahar. Uh, we do compare ourselves against countries. We think that's important. Uh, we do look at this as a competition. We check against our past, but we need to check ourselves against the competition in present time. And uh, this validates what we are seeing in other uh, competitiveness uh, indices. Uh, as I said in governance and institutions uh, that was our leading driver for bringing up our scores this year in the world economic forum uh, though we are still low we have moved you know positively up 23 ranks and not coincidentally our infrastructure rating has also improved and here i think a lot of credit has to go to secretary singson because among the infrastructure areas the part that has really improved the most among all infrastructure is the area under him, which is roads uh, and, and bridges. Now, so it does show you that when you fix up your processes, uh, you can have an impact on, on the infrastructure side. The other thing that, that I think is good with surveys like this is the fact that we're able to compare a series of 10 snapshots uh, so we know exactly uh, what's you know, where the improvements are and, and where, there, where there aren't any improvements. We didn't have enough time and Mahart didn't have time, but uh, for those of you who can attend tomorrow's briefing at, at AIM, one thing that's good is when he does the regional breakdowns, then you can also see what city would you like to do business in? Angeles, Batangas, Iloilo, Cebu, Cagayan de Oro, Davao. Because it'll tell you which agencies in those areas and how they are performing uh, on the details he, g he gave us. So he, he just gave us the national snapshot, but you can drill down and, and see what's happening regionally. And I think that's also important because the, the deterioration is on the regional side. It's the local government side and the private side. The national government, I think, is doing well. Steve. Well, I'll cheat a little bit by, because I saw a, a larger briefing and one of the uh, slides that did not get shown was that the average public has always thought that government could be run without corruption and I think that was a, uh, a major factor behind the president's election in, in 2010 yes. uh, so that uh, the businesses now have the same kind of hope I really object when anybody says Filipinos tolerate corruption Filipinos do not like corruption Okay, they just don't believe anything will be done about it. 
So that's what we need to do. We need to instill that in our, uh, in our uh, culture and in our, in our institutions. And finally, I'd just like to cross uh, walk a little bit. One of the uh, uh, other data points that have been coming out over the last few months is a PCIJ investigation of contracts. And contracts uh, became much more efficient and cost effective at the national level, but the improvement at the city and local level was less. And that is exactly the kind of thing we were seeing in the rating of city governments not getting better in this, so that we do need to continue to try to improve the city level because so much of people's lives is determined about what happens there. Ambassador Trudell. Bill number two. Bill number two. Yeah. Um, I think two points I'd make, and very briefly. One is that the, we are encouraged that the trends shown are mainly in the right direction, not universally, but mainly in the right direction. Uh, that leads really uh, to a reaffirmation, at least to Australia, that, that this is an effort, this anti-corruption effort is an effort worth backing, and uh, we continue to do so. Secretary Singh. I think I'd like to emphasize that uh, for us to do to clean up the department, I really need the private sector's participation, meaning the private contractors. So what we've done is I've gone around to the regions and I've gathered all of the contractors and I've sat down with them and we told them we want more transparent bidding, get away from this collusion thing. And so we've even changed our procedures. Uh, one, class, one major example that I'd like to say is that it used to be that for a contractor to participate in a bidding, you had to submit a letter of intent, meaning everybody gets to know who will be the participants in a particular bidding. And this is where collusion starts, because everybody knows who you have to talk to if you want to be the winner of a particular bid. We've taken that out. So people can just go to the bidding table, they can pay the, the fees anywhere in a, any office of DPWH, so nobody actually knows until the day of bidding. And also, uh, we have told them that we are now moving towards electronic bidding. So we're putting in place uh, electronic bidding for our contracts. Hopefully, we will get it in place by next year so that we avoid a lot of the collusion that's happening at the local level. Now, so uh, as I said, in terms of uh, the DPWH, we will need the support and cooperation of all the stakeholders, particularly the private sector. Secretary Singson, um, congratulations. I mean, it seems, from, even from the questions, widely acknowledged. Great job in what you're doing. Um, let me just ask you about the, the pushback, perhaps, that happens. In, in 2010, when you took office, uh, growth rate was at 7.3, 7.4, and then you clamped down on processes, which is really necessary to fight corruption, but growth rate went down in 2011 to 3.7%. Is this a, the impact of that, or you know, how do you balance this? Well, uh, unfortunately, we were taking over a budget uh, that was prepared midstream. If you recall, uh, we, had, we did not have a great opportunity to look at the 2011 budget. So it was practically done when we came in in July. So uh, when we took over, there were so many congressional initiatives, in other words, insertions, insertions. That, did, that did not have details. <laughs> yes. So we had to require, as I said, the discipline of coming up with individual programs of work before they could be spent. So they were not there. Yes. So we had to put in the discipline, as I said, I could have spent that if that was just a question of spending, but I wanted to make sure that the spending was right. So we were behind by about six months to put in the discipline, but by the late second half of 2011, we were able to ramp up because the procedures were already in place. Now for 2012, you can see everybody's now complaining, why are we doing all these projects all at the same time? You have not seen them yet. 2013, will, our budget for local projects is going to double in 2013. So you can expect more. You can you please accept that there will be some inconvenience as we fix up the roads. What is the biggest lesson that you learned 
in terms of fighting corruption. Get all the stakeholders behind you. Together. Which Especially is, the general public, because they will be your, your um, eyes and ears at the ground level. There are several questions here for you. Bill, you have something? You, oh. <laughs> How much have you saved per project, says Bill? A question from the panel. Actually, what, what we've done, uh, when I saw the, the numbers, I just closed my eyes and said, remove the, your estimates by 10% without blinking an eyelash. Just take out 10% before you go out to bidding. And after removing 10%, we went to competitive bidding. We were still getting minus 20, minus 15 from the agency estimates. So all told, uh, by now, after recycling a lot of the savings, we're still up by more than 10 billion. This is a great question from the audience, which is anonymous, but a wonderful question. Um, Mahar asked, where are the honest taxpayers? The statistic was only one in five pay taxes, right? And this is a response. The taxpayers who try to be honest are harassed and intimidated by vicious tax examiners from good taxpayers turn bad, dishonest taxpayers. It will be more expensive to file with tax courts than to pay extortion fee. What can we do? <laughs> anyone feel or does anyone feel actually I've heard this question often where you know they try to, people try to do the right thing but then um, there's a, a, an extort a, an incident of extortion Bill well I, I was going to say it's unfortunate